Good Wednesday evening, everybody. Peak of the week. Things are decently quiet for right now. We again have some fog concerns a little bit for tonight, but really just not that much out there. Definitely nowhere where we were for the course of the last couple of days, so definitely good news on that. If you have any plans for travel tonight, that's going to be about the big thing. There are still some scattered showers out there. Very light in nature. Still just not seeing too much out there in the way of very huge amounts of rain or precipitation for right now. We may be looking at the possibility of some more problems into around uh, Veterans Day, but also again seeing the potential of most of what we're going to be looking at in the way of rainfall coming up as we go into the next several days afterwards into next week. Possibility of some more chances of rainfall heading on through. Again, not great chances, but the best that we've seen so far. And as this is typically one of the rainiest months of the year, there's really just not that much out there to worry about where it comes to huge amounts of rainfall. We can pick up about four to five inches of rain easily at this time of the year. So we're just not, again, seeing too much of anything out there uh, in the way of major problems so far. So if you have any plans for outdoors for this month, that's something you're going to have to watch out for just to be on the safe side because as of right now, Looking again at some pretty quiet conditions uh, for right now where it comes to anything involving rainfall across the area. So it could be some slightly less, le less wet roadways. Try saying that three times fast. Uh, again, for later on tonight. Now the good news, right about sunset tonight, we did manage to pick up a little bit of sunshine out there. So some of you did see a little bit of sunset. So that was kind of nice to be able to see some of those rumors of the sunshine being confirmed again by just a little bit. And hopefully tomorrow picking up a little bit more about that. The rain tonight we're expecting will be lingering on through for just a little while and then basically kind of leaving the area, giving us a couple of days worth of sunshine. New cold front by about Friday. That should give us a fairly cool Friday night football and then toward the end of the week and into the weekend, going to be seeing again some interesting amounts of some changes taking place as we go into and around the area of about next week. We'll explain more about what that is coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Most of what we're looking at at this point is going to be, again, fairly light conditions out there. We'll go ahead and talk more about what the rest of the forecast is looking like coming up here in just a little bit. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on Periscope and Twitter. If you've never been here before, thanks a lot for dropping on by. Again, my name is Austin Onik. I'm a meteorologist with WREG News Channel 3 in Memphis, Tennessee. Glad to have you along for the ride for everything going on. And as of right now, again, some pretty decent quiet conditions, again, out there for the time being. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on around the rest of the area for right now. We don't have, again, a lot taking place at this point, but we do have, again, uh, some areas of patchy clouds and fog out there, as you can see from our Windyke Country Club shot for this evening. Not much to look at at this point in time, I'll grant you, but that does show, again, the uh, possibility of getting into a little bit more in the way of drizzle out across much of the area for the early portions of the area for tonight so a little bit again of some activity out there for this evening where it comes to patchy fog and a little bit of haze as well. Rest of the evening again should be about the same thing out there we're just not looking at too much to show uh, in the way of foggy conditions as of the time being but if you do have plans for travel that could be something to take a look at there. Going live on Facebook welcome to everybody for tuning in for this evening hopefully the broadcast will last more than 30 seconds uh, because as of right now we're still getting some uh, low conditions on our antenna signal for some odd reason. I don't know why that is, considering we're sitting right on top of the emitter for tonight. Again, for this evening, not doing too bad out there for tonight. Again, for fog purposes, we'll take a look at visibility coming up in just a little bit. Again, if you're just joining us on Periscope, Twitter, or Facebook, welcome to our video weather blog for Wednesday evening, peak of the week. And as of right now on Wednesday, we're not seeing too much of anything in the way of major league problems. Let's go ahead and go to radar and show you what we're taking a look at. Again, we do have some scattered light showers taking place, mainly across northern Mississippi. The heaviest activity just outside the News Channel 3 viewing area, down into and around the area south of Clarksdale, Lambert, Charleston, Grenada, or Grenada, depending on how you pronounce that. Did both of them back in Kansas or that way. Uh, Bruce, Calhoun City, north of Winona, Greenwood, picking up again some of the heaviest showers taking place right now. So if you're heading south on I-55 or know anybody who's heading north from Jackson, 
uh, up this direction. You're probably going to run into some of those areas of showers out there. Rest of the Mid-South just not really looking at all that much for the time being. A little bit of showers making their way into southwest Tennessee, north of Corinth, up toward around Savannah, and that's about as good as it gets up that direction. North of I-40, nothing showing up, just moisture out there, and drier air should be making its way into the Mid-South as we get into overnight. We're not going to be seeing clearing skies immediately, but we may see, again, some areas of clear skies within the next few hours. <coughs> Excuse me especially north of I-40 into later on this morning and into tomorrow morning. Rumor has it that we're probably going to get some sunshine back in the air. Computer models are getting ready to go for that, so that sounds pretty good out there. Gloria Davis, welcome from Ashland, Mississippi. Thanks for joining us there. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on around the Mid-South area, which, seismically speaking, does not amount to much. We're not seeing anything uh, in the way of rainfall purposes uh, or in the way of earthquakes out there for right now. From the Center for Earthquake Research and Information in Memphis, we're just not seeing anything uh, in the way of earthquakes in the course of the last about 24 hours. So good news on that from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information from the University of Memphis. If you'd like to see more about that, just go to memphis.edu slash CERI, and you can track more of these earthquake information segments there. Burn bans wanted to touch on this since it's been a while since we've talked about this. Uh, the only county under a burn ban in Arkansas is Columbia, way on down in the southwestern parts of the area close to around uh, areas around Arkansas for right now. We have no other burn bans in effect for the state of Arkansas at this point, so things are looking much better out there. The wildfire danger situation is actually fairly low. We do not have too much going on, mainly because of the fact that we've had enough rainfall out there, kind of dry in the northwest parts of the state and kind of dry in the southern parts of the state, but that nice little swath through the Arkansas and down toward around the Mississippi River Valleys, pretty well on the green side, looking pretty good there. No burn bans to report from Mississippi Forestry Commission, so good news about that. No burn bans in effect uh, for the state of Mississippi. Tennessee, again, does not issue burn bans per se. They do issue them uh, as necessary, but as of right now, we do not have any burn bans in effect. And remember that a burn permit is required until May 15th. You've got to make certain you file that. And if you don't know what the burn conditions are out there, check with your local fire department. They'll be able to tell you. And if they can't, they can put you in touch with somebody who can. So good news on that. Jet stream dipping on down from the north. That's doing a good job of keeping things much cooler back to the north as well. Add to that, we've got a decent storm system right off the coast of Alaska, which is bringing in some much needed moisture there, helping out the firefighters and quenching a few of those hot spots out there. So good news on that. What we have for right now in and around the mid south doesn't really amount to much but we do have a bit of a jet streak coming on through and that's helping that red area is the fastest moving wind speed and that's doing a good job of bringing in a little bit of moisture to help us keep things fairly uh, dr not dry out there for the time being so hopefully it stays that way into the evening hours as we go into the overnight period looking at drier conditions coming on through we'll talk more about that in the forecast in just a little bit Rena is a tropical storm and still should be remaining a tropical storm as we go into to the next about maybe 24 hours. Winds at 50 miles per hour, just barely a tropical storm at this time. Not really all that much to see out of this one. And once again, this does not appear to be a threat to anything involving the continental United States. Unfortunately, at this time, once again, the British Isles may be in a path for another storm system coming their way by the time we head into the weekend. So that could slow down some travel if you're heading across the pond anytime soon, so something to keep in mind there. Satellite picture, again, showing a decent amount of cloud cover out there, but if you take a look back to the north of us into Missouri, parts of Illinois, Kentucky, Kansas, even Oklahoma, is picking up a little bit of dry conditions out there. Bozo Wolfolk from Senatobia, welcome to the show. No, you guys are awesome for tuning in and watching, and thank you guys very much for doing so. Some of that dry air that you see in here is going to be, again, 
making its way into the Mid-South as we go into the evening hours overnight. So we'll get some clearing skies in here, but it's going to take a while to get all those clearing skies in this direction heading our way. But it'll get here. We'll have to just have to be kind of patient on that. Currently in the Mid-South, we again have a decent amount of cool conditions out there. We've got temperatures mainly back into around the upper 40s to around the lower 50s. Shelby County in Memphis, so it's a brisk evening out there with some decent amounts of fairly chilly conditions and going to continue to see, again, a fairly cool night tonight. How cool? Well, we'll talk about lows coming up here in just a little bit. Coldest area close to the Mid-South is way back up to around Walnut Ridge. We've got a temperature of 44 degrees. Winds out of the north at about 6, so that's taking wind chills down into around the mid to upper 30s in some locations. But beyond that, it's not all that bad. Again, pretty typical for this time of the year, so not doing too terrible out across the Mid-South. Now, as we go into the course of the next several days, going to be seeing again the possibility of a little bit more in the way of rainfall coming up. It doesn't look like much at this point in time, and again, you have to look way on over on the right-hand side of your screen, but as we look into around next week, there's the possibility of what we're going to be seeing uh, is definitely a little bit more rainfall coming our direction, and that's going to be a little bit of rain after, before, during, and after the weekend, and then as we head into the end of next week, the rainfall chances really start to ramp up a bit. doesn't look like much maybe about another third of an inch, but that's about as good as it gets for right now. So again, chances of rainfall out there will be sticking around, but otherwise not doing too bad for the chances of rain as we go into the next couple of days. So much of what we're looking at right now looks appears to be that next storm system getting here by the time we finish up next weekend, and that could be again our next best chance of rainfall coming on through such as it is for right now. Basically what it looks like for about the next 36 hours is we've got high pressure making its way across Canada, giving some snow showers to around the Great Lakes. What we're going to see is that next cold front dropping into the area and dissipating as we go from Friday night into very early Saturday morning. But that means we could be looking at some very cool temperatures by the time we hit Friday night football. So definitely want to plan ahead for that just to be on the safe side. Uh, if you're going to be doing anything outdoors on Friday night. Here's what we're looking for again into the rest of the evening for tonight. Low temperatures back in the upper 30s to around the lower 40s heading into tomorrow. High temperatures, again, not all that warm. Pretty comfortable, actually, for, at least for me. A lot of people I know have been uh, talking about the, just a little bit too chilly for them on here, but uh, this will be pretty comfortable back in the upper 50s or so for high temperatures tomorrow. Chances of rain gone for tomorrow. Chances of sunshine looking very good out there. In fact, we may even see some good sunrise shots out there for tomorrow. What you're looking at is the percentage of cloud cover out there. Tomorrow morning about 6 a.m., 10% sky coverage around Memphis, 11 in Clarksdale, 21 in Tupelo, and you can see some of those uh, gray conditions down there. That's the cloud cover finally making its way out of the picture down toward the south and to the east, so good news there. Low temperatures on Thursday evening will be dropping it down into the lower to mid-30s, so maybe some more frost heading our way around Dyersburg, the Boot Hill, and back into northeastern Arkansas. Friday's high temperatures back in the lower to mid-50s, and again, that's that next cold front coming on through. So winds will be turning from the south back out of the northeast at about 5 to 10. Friday night, about the time Friday night football kicks off dry, but it's going to be in the lower to mid 40s by the time the games get going. So please keep that in mind if you have any plans for football games. Low temperatures into Saturday morning, back into the lower to mid 30s. Veterans Day, and a very big thank you to all the veterans out there. High temperatures on Saturday going back into around the upper 50s to around the lower 60s. Low Saturday night dropping to the mid to upper 40s. And chances of rain showers making their way back into the forecast as we head toward midnight Sunday morning. More of those chances of rain showers stick around throughout the entire day on Sunday. Not great chances, but still possible. And upper 50s for highs on Sunday going ahead into Monday. High temperatures going back into around the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s, so getting pretty mild there. A lot of you have asked about this. And I wanted to make certain to bring this along uh, to your attention. You've noticed uh, in the last couple of days 
that the Skywarn classes from the National Weather Service have come to an end. The fall semester is basically over with for right now. The next time the National Weather Service will be teaching those classes will be coming up in late winter and early springtime, right about the time our main severe weather season gets going. Right about now, we're in the second severe weather season for the Mid-South. It goes from about October through about late De mid to late December or so. We can get some nasty storms around here between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And if you don't believe me, uh, ask the folks who live around Houston High School out around Germantown and Collierville about their tornado they had back in about 96, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in there. If you'd like to take the course, if you'd like to know more about being a Skywarn spotter, you can go to MetEd with University uh, University uh, Council for Atmospheric Research and a great opportunity to learn more about what's going on here. You need to go to MetEd, that's Meteorological Education. These are continuing education courses for meteorologists like myself that need to stay up to date on things like this. And if you'd like to know more about this, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com and I'll send you the address about this. But you can take all it takes is, is registration. It's totally free. Don't need to pay for anything on this. But you can take the Skywarn Spotters course online and get a certificate for it. If you can't attend any of the meetings, the meetings have been uh, all over the place and you haven't been able to get to the meetings, but you still want to know what to do when severe weather hits, here's your answer. A great opportunity to take that. And if you'd like to know more, got tons of information online, plenty of details available for if you're too busy or if you travel a lot and want to keep up to date on how to spot for severe weather, take the course every year with updated information. Great here. And also if you're weather curious or if you have to keep up to date on things like that for uh, environmental science as part of your job, take a look because they might have a lot there. It's meted.ucar.edu. Again, that's meted.ucar.edu. And again, it's a great place to go to to keep up to date and to get yourself trained on what to look for when it comes to severe weather when you can't take the classes off by the National Weather Service. Next classes should be coming up in late January. When those drop, we will let you know about that as soon as possible. Check out more on my Facebook page. Again, tons of information if you're a night owl. Uh, we try to program this so that it's got tons of information that happens every uh, little while, whether it's science or geography or chemistry or space exploration or weather. We try to drop some weather in there every once in a while. It's a nice idea. So if you'd like to know more about that, sign up for my Facebook page at facebook.com slash austinonicwreg. Also, don't forget about my Twitter page, twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3. Uh, Instagram, instagram.com, no underscore necessary aonic wreg3 one word all the way on through thank you very much and if you like to check out what's going on on periscope and watch what goes on there some great programs available uh, from the great james span down in birmingham on abc 3340 uh, a lot of great information around the rest of the world a lot of great information about how to get your netcast up and working some great uh, information i've gotten from lucia petrucci I uh, hope I'm saying that name correctly, but a great place to follow uh, for more information on that. So this is a good opportunity to see more there uh, if you'd like to know more. I'll be back on tomorrow morning again with News Channel 3's forecast with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio. That's Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m., so you can check out more there. More of our weather forecast from the News Channel 3 Weather Center, again, at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to see more at that location as well. We'll have another weather overtime, weather permitting, coming up tomorrow morning, bright and early. Maybe we'll do it outside if the weather is pleasant enough. We'll see what goes on there. In the meantime, if you have any questions about anything, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Glad to have you along for the ride tonight, and stay tuned to News Channel 3 on air and online for more weather information.